What's good, y'all? Case through the GOAT, Stuart V for Venom Sports. And we're going to be talking about some more Auburn football, man. There's a lot of news coming off the plains as we've got a couple of things developing now. They lost out on Kelly Bryant, uh, the, the transfer quarterback from Clemson who was highly touted, mainly because he's a dual-threat quarterback. He's got a lot of incredible experience um, appearing in uh, the national championship. Uh, won some key games for, for Clemson during his tenure there. Uh, Auburn lost out on him during the recruiting trail. Also, what's happening at Auburn, Jarrett Stidham, the highly touted quarterback out of Baylor who had some, some very good uh, moments at Auburn, uh, threw for over 2,100-plus yards, has declared for the NFL. And last but not least, oh, man, Chip Lindsey, the offensive coordinator for Auburn, who has some success at Arizona State and Mrs. I mean, old not Ole Miss, but Southern Miss um, has decided that he wants to go, he wants to part ways with Auburn and go to Kansas. Now, obviously, Gus Malzahn has at least one more year at Auburn. That's, you know, that's a given. But when we look at the totality of the decisions that were made by the other guys, it really magnifies what's really happening under a Gus Malzahn-led Auburn Tigers. Well, we're going to talk about Jared Stidham first. Now, Jared Stidham, don't get me wrong, I think he has a lot of talent. I think he's a, a, when, he's, when he has time to throw the football and he surveys the field properly, he throws a good football. He's a very good quarterback. But you can tell between this year... And last year, pretty much since his arrival at Auburn, there really hasn't been much from a developmental standpoint for Jared Stidham. When I looked at him, especially when, you know, those game-winning drives that you expect a quarterback to be able to lead, uh, he found himself very inept, found himself succumb to pressure, found himself without the tools to lead his team to victory in a lot of cases. And I can attribute that to just a plain old lack of development. So Jared Stidham decides, you know what, I'm going to go pro. I'm going to take my chances and go pro because really statistically and from what Jared Stidham had accomplished this year, I mean, just from the outside looking in, he had no business declaring for the NFL. But because of the lack of development and because of the misutilization of him at Auburn, he decides to jump ship. He sees that if he remains at Auburn, he's not going to ever, if anything, he's going to wind up getting himself hurt, you know, ruining any chance for him to play on the next level. So that's where we are. You know, Jared Stidham obviously needs another year, but he just doesn't believe in Gus Malzahn's ability to put him in the right situations because, I, I mean, just looking at Jared Stidham on film, and listening to some of the things that Gus Malzahn said prior to Jared Stidham's arrival, you know, none of that ever crystallized properly. Gus Malzahn probably sat in Jared Stidham's living room and told him, hey, we see your skill set. We see that you're a great passer. We see that we could, you know, kind of kind of maneuver our offense around your skill set. But did Gus Malzahn do that? Clearly not, because... When I looked at film on Jarrett Stidham when he was at Baylor and even in high school, he was more of a passing quarterback. Dual threat was not even in the vicinity for Jarrett Stidham. Now, could he run a little bit? Yeah, yeah, he could run a little bit. But not to the extent that Gus Malzahn likes to run his offense. Um, so he bought Jarrett Stidham in. Jared Stidham had a relative amount of success, especially once Carrion Johnson got going last year. But this year, he didn't have that luxury. And guess what happened? Jared Stidham failed miserably in what was supposed to be a Heisman campaign year for him. Very disappointing, and it goes to show Gus Malzahn did not hold his end of the deal up with Jared Stidham. So now Jared Stidham is really rolling the dice and saying, you know, because of this, because I don't see any future in me staying at Auburn, no chance of an SEC championship. He's, he's written off any opportunity to win a national championship with Auburn. So, unfortunately, he leaves. 
thus leaving Auburn in a depleted quarterback situation because just yesterday, their chance to redeem themselves and, and get back to the run-pass option, which Gus Malzahn really likes to do, Kelly Bryant says no. Why, in my opinion, Kelly Bryant said no is this. Number one, there are a whole lot of quarterbacks, obviously, at Auburn now. Uh, they even recruited a 24-year-old Court Sandberg. You know, they have uh, Malik Willis. They also have Bo Nix, who will be coming back. And also, Gus Malzahn does not care about the fact that, you know, Kelly Bryant is trying to further his career. And, the, and he knows the development is, is not going to be there because it, all the quarterbacks that have been successful under Gus Malzahn, they utilize the skill set they had, and Gus Malzahn pretty much rolled with it. No development, no adjustments. He just found what they were good at, and he just exploited it. He didn't, he didn't coach up. He didn't make any adjustments. He just said, hey, this guy's good at this. We're going to just keep this going. He can run. He can throw the ball a little bit. Just keep it going. But do the quarterbacks at Auburn get better? No, they don't. And for several reasons. Number one, Gus Malzahn has shown throughout his history that he really, especially when it, when it starts at the Power 5 Auburn University, that he doesn't have the capability to make a quarterback better. Now, Dan Mullen, pretty good at it. Jimbo Fisher, pretty good at developing quarterbacks, pretty much uh, you know, helping them develop to their strengths. Because if you look at it, you look at um, Dak Prescott, for example, over at uh, Mississippi State. I think Dan Mullen did an incredible job accentuating Dak Prescott's skill set, which is translated over. Not, you know, not always perfect, but it's translated over to him being a, a somewhat decent quarterback in the NFL. And Jared Stidham and, and Kelly Bryant, they're like, no, we're not. I'm not going to take a chance. At getting injured, I'm not going to take a chance at my stock going down even further by dealing with a coach like Malzahn. And last but not least, Chip Lindsey is pro losing Chip Lindsey is glaring for Gus Malzahn. Chip Lindsey was actually making $1.1 million this year to be an offensive coordinator at Auburn, then makes a crazy, uh, uh, I mean, a, a head scratching decision to go to Kansas. Somebody asked Chip, hey, Chip, where are you coaching at now? At Kansas. What? You talking about the basketball Kansas? Yes. Basketball Kansas. The Kansas Jayhawks with the ugly blue uniforms. That's where Chip Lindsey's headed. And it just goes to show Chip Lindsey decided for his future as an offensive coordinator. His stock steadily going down as an offensive coordinator because what? When I look at film on Chip Lindsey and his offenses that were very successful, they did not look anything like what we were seeing at Auburn. You saw great passing. Now, he did kind of screen you to death, but you saw great passes. You saw de uh, decent um, schematics offensively, and you saw results, record-breaking results at Arizona State and Southern Miss. He gets to Auburn and has the worst offensive output maybe in Auburn's recent history. Mainly because Gus Malzahn would not give him reins to the offense, would not allow him to call his own offense, gave him terrible assistant coaches. I think Chip Lindsay had the, uh, you know, had the prospect a bit of being a very, very good offensive coordinator. And that's what he saw. Rewind it back a little bit to Rhett Lashley. Rhett Lashley actually left Auburn to take a three hundred thousand dollar pay cut to go to where else? UConn. What does that say? I don't want to coach. I can't be around Gus Malzahn. I, I, I will not get better under Gus Malzahn. Right now, Gus Malzahn's only re the only reason he's still at Auburn is because of that $32 million buyout. That's similar to at your job only being there because you got some dirt on somebody. That's the only reason why you're there. I can imagine the university has zero confidence in what Gus Malzahn is going to do moving forward. So when I look at this, this spells big time doom for Auburn in the future. Bo Nix is going to be coming next year. 
Joey Gatewood, highly touted out of uh, high school. Where are they going to wind up? I can predict one's going to transfer. They're going to they're going to push. They're going to force Bo Nix down our throat because, you know, his father went to school there. And, you know, Malik Willis will not play. Joey Gatewood will not play. So there you have wasted recruiting efforts. And these guys careers, again, are about to be cheated. If I was, uh, you know, if I'm Kelly Bryant, why would I want to go to a school that already has five quarterbacks? That doesn't make sense. Gus Malzahn will probably coach his last season at Auburn next year. And Auburn will have to find a coach that could that can help take their program to another level because Gus can't do it. I'm going to tell you why he can't do it. First of all, if you look at his victories, I mean, even the the 12 and two national championship appearance, you take away the kick six and the prayer at Jordan Hare, and you got something like an eight and four season there. The ball just bounced the other way. All subsequent years, seven and five, eight and five. Kinda sorta got lucky with some timing and went 10 and four beating Alabama and Georgia both number ones in the same season. But I say that to say this, guys. You can't escape your development. You can't escape your willingness to develop. And you can't sustain yourself off of the ball bouncing, happen to bounce the right way. So the reason why I don't think Gus Malzahn will be successful at Auburn, especially, is because the things that are making him successful are not sustainable. You got to coach the whole game and you have to allow the people around you to do what they're paid to do. He has the highest payroll, one of the highest payroll for assistant coaches in the country. And he's still micromanaging them. And what is that leading to? That's leading to him being stressed out. That's leading to his players not being properly developed. Auburn only has two First round draft picks since he's been there. 20 draft picks total. Most of the guys that come out of Auburn have to fight and claw just to get on a team. Whereas the guys up the street in Tuscaloosa, he has close to 20 first round picks alone. And 49 guys drafted all together. So what does that tell you? That tells you Gus doesn't have the ability to develop people. Say when Nick's when people leave Nick Saban, they go on to be head coaches. When people le- when people leave Gus Mal's on, they make lateral moves for less pay. What does that tell you? That tells you you have the wrong leader in place. Once again, it's Case Stewart, Goat Stewart V for Venom Sports. Like, comment, and subscribe. Write in the comments whatever you all want to hear next. Um, you know we're gonna get off the Gus Mal's on train, but it was just some food for thought when, it, when you know when you think about development, especially the leadership position. And in sports, sports is, uh, you know, can be synonymous to life. You all have a good day.